everybody. How's it going tonight? Oh, man, I should have combed my beard today, but I just had so many other things to do. I probably should have quick clipped my eyebrows as well, but what are you going to do? I'm here to talk to you guys tonight about, oh, wow, look at that car go by. Woo, that was fast. Is that a bird out there? Or is that a squirrel? Wait, tell me. Oh, man. It was a plastic bag. I'm just so sad because I love chasing plastic bags and I don't get to. <laughs> Hi. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm Elise Taranjo, and um, this is a little difficult for me right now because I have an ear infection in my ear canal for almost two weeks. Um, I'm like completely deaf in my left ear, so I can't really hear my surroundings right now. I can only hear like what I'm saying, so it's like awkward. I still haven't really adjusted, but I'm going to do the best I can to deliver a great teaching presentation to you guys. I am doing my presentation on Children as Sacred Beings by Robert Atkinson and Patricia Locke. This is based off of the Lakota um, people or tribe of the Native American tribes. So let's begin. Children are our sacred beings. They each have a birthright, and that is to experience delight and joy, health and well-being, to be safe and secure, and to unfold to their fullest by promise by being nourished, loved, and to live in peace. In order to be fulfilled, they must experience formal education. They must be able to play and use their imaginations. The Lakota culture considers their children to be very sacred. They are a gift from the Creator. Lakota people believe that we are all gifted from the time we were created and we have a choice to share those gifts with others and make a difference. One person can make a difference. I have always believed that. Lakota children, as well as all children in retrospect, were raised by the elderly in the family. That would even be just the mom and the dad. They are older than the child themselves. Because the elders are the wisdom of the people in which we hold the most respect for. They are in charge of passing down the cultural ways of our people so that voices and actions are not forgotten, but rather learned from. And so we must remember in raising or teaching, or teaching children that they cannot be subject to abuse and neglect. It has to stop. For those children are truly our gatekeepers of the future in one day. They will be the elders in which we are, in which are sharing wisdom. Let's make the wisdom promising. One person can make a difference, and it starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with him. It starts with him and her and Tigger. It starts with all of us, okay? We must love one another unconditionally, and especially our children. And this will hopefully lead toward the peaceful, peaceful and tranquil lead. Sorry, can't hurt myself. <laughs> it will lead towards peace and tranquility for us all. The first thing I would like to talk about, now that we are within the content of this packet that I read, um, since I've worked in the school systems myself, and uh, I've had some, I have some crazy stories, you know, even um, one that really sticks into my mind is a story of a a four-year-old and the language that he used it was just um, hard to believe that he 
you know, even knew such words at such a young age. Um, but the stories he would tell us as how he would be handled at home um, in a wrongdoing ma um, matter, like he would be spanked or or um, scolded, and and it didn't stop at home. It was even in public. So the Lakota tribe, they stressed that this, these children should be given unconditional love no matter what. So in a wrongdoing, in a matter of wrongdoing, these children should be gently disciplined. And it should be indirect and never in public. Excuse me for a second. Oh, goodness, the kids are at it again. Come with me. I have to solve this. Every night, they're at it, I tell you. It's mine. Stress, Jake, stop hitting. Tell me I stink. Stop hitting. Take it. I don't want it now. Don't Take call it. Call me names. Ah. Mom. Mom. I'm right here, Johnny. Johnny. Sarah. Boys and girls are always kind to one another. <laughs> She's not kind. She's not being kind. You stink. She's never kind. She tries, but she's never kind. Well, hey, Sarah. See, that's not kind. <laughs> Kidding isn't kind. That's right, Johnny. Uh, I'm proud of you. Girls and boys are always kind to one another, especially brothers and sisters. Yeah. You two are brothers and sisters, aren't you? Yeah. That's nice, Sarah. You guys love each other? It's always this way. Okay? Okay. Sorry. We all have to be nice to each other. We have to share. You can have it. That's nice, Johnny. Uh, and Sarah, maybe when you're done, Johnny can have it back. Uh. Thanks, guys. Continue on. Continue playing. Bye, Mom. Bye, guys. Ah, yeah. oh, kids, these days. Seems as if they're always fighting about something. Back up to my office. So now, if us as parents, I'm not a parent quite yet, but I do have a dog, and I make sure that I love her unconditionally. Um, if we, what's the word I'm looking for? If we show that kind of behavior to our children where we are handling situations maturely with respect and generosity in that we are always giving and teaching wisdom, in turn we can hope that our kids when they grow up will do the same. I feel like today in society there's too much screen time. Um, kids spend way too much time on computers and TV and iPods and cell phones and, I mean, even as adults, we're guilty of it. And we spend less time interacting with each other and experiencing nature, which was extremely important to the Lakota tribe. Um, we are all related. That means trees, animals, boys and girls. We are all related. We must have path, I mean, we must have balance and harmony with all creatures. And once we do that, it is the sign of truly understanding the principles that we are all related, all, that we are all related. The Lakota people talked about their values. Number one is courage. Number two is respect. Number three is generosity, and number four is wisdom. They're not the only ones that have to practice all four of those values. I feel like those values should be instilled upon all of us. Because, like they said, we are all related. 
They spoke of courage, as in today's world, this means developing a strong moral capacity to be able to know right from wrong and true from false and being able to act upon that knowledge. That is what we should teach our kids. We should be able to lead an upright life, to go through life bravely without a whimper, bearing slander and misinterpretation without stopping to correct them, and enduring loss upon loss without discouragement. We should have respect for each other, for our elders, for all that who we are related to and for those that we aren't even related to. The Lakota tribe stressed that even um, without blood relations, we are all related because we are all interrelated. There's a story in here um, about a murderer who the tribe actually took in as one of their own because he did not have anyone in his life and they forgave him and they were like, you will be my brother, you will be my cousin or whatnot. And I mean, they broke into him like which with most murder murderers from watching CSI and Criminal Minds, it's hard to um, get emotion out of them, and, and this guy, as they describe in the story, you know, cried and just felt overwhelmed with love and compassion. Then third value is the generosity, and they gave an example of um, a woman, for instance, sitting down at dinner in her house, and if a child should come to her door and she has not but one piece of meat left, and she had already placed it in her mouth, that she should take it out and give it to that child. You should be as generous as this. Generosity, they say, in spirit of spirit in today's world means trying to understand and love others beyond the immediate family. Um, just going out for a walk down the street with my dog or something, um, you know, you see, like, a car driving, and they go to turn, and then the car behind them, like, speeds off and beeps the horn and is yelling out the window. It's like, why did you do that? Why would, did you feel that was necessary? Like, stuff like that just isn't necessary. Um, and going back on talking about the iPods and, and all that stuff, they stress that in generosity and, the, and that value that human relationships are more important than mere material things. Um, sometimes I feel like people would dive off a bridge to get their cell phone rather than a friend. <laughs> uh, it's that crazy, but we need to be compassionate people. We must never forget that we have that capability, um, or I mean that ability inside us, and we need to spread it. We need to know and design the purpose of life for ourselves and for others. We need to be open to the dreams of the day and the night when spiritual direction may come to a receptive child or adult seeking wisdom. We must always be willing to learn and to relearn. No matter how old we are, we can always learn something new and we can always learn things from each other. And the last value is wisdom. And wisdom is very important. This is understood as being something sought and gained over the course of one's entire life, but not just by adding years to one's life. Wisdom has to do with understanding the meaning within natural processes and patterns. It means knowing the design and the purpose of life, as I had said before. Something I really, now that I've covered the four values that really stuck out to me because they should be values that are practiced among everybody and not just in this tribe. Um, but they talked about education. 
and how it's important as teachers um, and even parents that we educate and re-educate. Um, and they gave an example about racism. They said the curriculum in today's society is um, materials that rather that kind of reinforce racism um, and instead that curriculum should help eradicate racism. Racism needs to be a proactive approach in the classroom. Teachers should and um, if they don't already they should explore and examine their own beliefs, values, and biases, just like us counselors, and even work together with one another to overcome individual prejudices. They also gave an idea that teachers could establish in their own schools a time and a place for a gathering, like a talking circle, where kids come together and they speak truthfully on matters that touch the heart. It gives children a voice. Um, and I think that's really important because we teach, 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 but um, it's always really a question if the kids are retaining the information, but if they are um, encouraged to speak their opinion and, um, you know, give their wisdom on something, it might be more easily attained than if we're just sitting in our desks from 8 to 3 or something. Um, and something that also really stuck out to me that I'd like to end on is we can learn about all this stuff um, about what we should practice and be as human beings um, and what we should teach our children and their children and stuff. But we really need to find our personal truth in life within ourselves and align our purpose with a larger whole. That means the world around us. We first need to clear out our mind of negative emotions, attitudes, habits, doubts, questions, or anything else that limits our growth and our acceptance of others. And we need to have a world view of each other that we are all breathing the same air. We are all intertwined and the one thing that we all have in common is our diversity and we should honor that all in all the Lakota principles their spiritual values and worldview of children and all other created things as sacred leaves no room for prejudice or inequality I wish to live a life as the members of these tribes have lived. Um, I think I have in my house and when I go out every day, um, but unfortunately I don't see that with everybody that I run into. And I mean, I'm not saying that this tribe was perfect, but it was really inspiring to read this packet. and. Um, we must all just stand together for the reason of peace and tranquility of life for all. So no matter what, I know I paused a lot in this, um, but I'm a little deaf and it's annoying. Um, just take out of this that love goes a long way, and that we must especially love our children and love them unconditionally no matter what.
because they are the future of this world. They're going to run this world someday. And as we are elders in a retirement home or whatever it may be, and you want to um, really see them living productive lives and and um, and be happy with the lives that they are living, and not discouraged. Don't forget that one person can make a difference. One. I've lived by that since I went to a leadership camp in eighth grade, and I've done my best to live up to that meaning. Be the voice of someone who feels as though they don't have a voice or they're too shy to speak up. Just have a voice and always be willing to learn. And together in this life, we can all learn so much from each other if we just open our eyes and read an article called Children as Sacred Beings. It is really inspirational. I've carried this on far too long, um, so I should go now, and uh, I hope it made sense, because if not, it's 21 minutes and, well, approaching 22 minutes of not making sense, if that's the case. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, happy almost end of semester, and I'll see you later. Love thy children.